よろひよひよよひよよおおひよひよひへいへいやふへいいまにゅまがふべやいとうわてよへい Hey, hey, oh, hey. My name is Relatives. Those of you guys just joining in, I'm currently at the Unity Conference over here in Denver, Colorado, speaking tomorrow and sharing the stories on indigenous independent media, community journalism, and what it means to be a digital storyteller. In Indian country and outside of Indian country. This is kind of the, the urban area right here for you, all you concrete Indians that's been here. It's been a journey here running into students who are running into the youth who recognize the work that's been done from all of our water protectors at Standing Rock, running into the、uh, chaperones and Stopping and visiting and sharing with them. They want to know so much about what's going on,、um, what's still going on. And many of you guys know that you, the youth are part of the social movement that happened, not just in the beginning, but the social movement in、uh, the September, October, and then so on. It was a youth that we didn't have to retrain to do the social media. For, for getting out the water protector's message and getting out all of the human right violations, the constitutional violations, but also a moment to educate and empower the youth to be able to look into themselves and their own culture and, and back home on what was going on. Beautiful opportunity to educate the FBI that are listening in right now, Tiger Swan listening in right now, the BIA that I know is listening in. And all the different agencies that were there from Homeland Security who are listening in to、um, uh, Park Ranger feds. You had uh, uh, so many different federal agencies that were there and security agencies that were there,、uh, security firms from around Bismarck. So, this is one of the most unique times I think we have is to be able to share that this is real. This is on, in Indian country, and this is something that's going to happen. And how do we prevent it from happening again? Many of the questions that, how do we stop this from happening again? We're protecting our traditional areas in our homelands, and we don't want our youth to go to jail. We don't want them to have this, this problem and this record and being、um, harassed by outside security and, in the, and then ignored by、uh, the administration up in DC. And what can we do and the strategies that we can use? And I, I'm just sharing with them my experience that I was very fortunate in the beginning of Standing Rock to have a lot of other、um, leaders from different movements come and share、uh, their story with me on what to do before, during, and after this movement and to continue to stay in with the, the media and how important it was to share this through i n d i g e n o u s i z e that this is an indigenous led movement. This is an inherent right movement and protecting the water. And you have to stay as much as possible on the media as, as to remind everyone that this is an indigenous led movement still. And so I'm going to share that with them here in the youth media and continue to empower them and share with them that the first early stages of media were the youth. And the youth that carried the message to DC was the youth and rode in and ran in. Um, on horses and brought in the buffalo and all the things that were so powerful to see. And those buffalo were one of the more, most powerful, I think, that, that、uh, it still hits me. I was sharing with、uh, a, a group of, of Native uh, uh, women that had their groups in there. This, the movement of when I interviewed Dean about what this land meant to him, and he was looking. Towards the officers, and then he looked off into the distance, and, and the buffalo came in. And it was just the power of emotion to see 
riders and the buffalo coming in. There was a couple hundred buffalo that were coming in off over the mountain. And as I panned the camera around, and then in the back, you could see everyone screaming and the whistles going off, the eagle whistles going off, and everyone's fished up in the air. And, you know, I, I, I got so flooded with emotion. This was only about an hour and a half ago, and I, I started crying. And I, I, as much as I've watched this video, it still is like the very first time I've seen it. And so to continue this work outside of the circle of, of Standing Rock, and most of the tribes I share with them have brought their struggles to Standing Rock. So they've already had their own movements back home and they brought that knowledge and intellectual knowledge and to remind them that this is an uh, intellectual battle and to, if you're angry, it's important to be intellectually angry and to also share with them uh, what does it mean to be in solidarity when you come to another territory that's not your own and for, for me, the most important part was to document history through indigenous eyes and to make sure that we held them accountable for the, for the violations that were happening to water protectors. Because I knew that in the end, the court would be, we'd be going through the court process. So if you guys are seeing this footage I'm pushing out about Morton County Police Department, documenting them and these violations and violating their own protocols. These are the reasons why I've spoken with my attorney to, to share with them that um, this is fresh. They're watching it. They're going to need to watch it. And they're going to see what they did wrong. Now, Kirschmeyer and Morton County are going around training officers in other departments, but they don't see the footage. And so the next campaign I want to do is, is to bring that footage to these officers and to show that the human right violations that they're being trained by, because that's what they're training them to do. And we're gonna to have to use social media, we're gonna to have to use you guys, uh, keyboard warriors, water protectors out there to help the story. The other thing that I, I, I share with them that's very, very important that was shared with me is that this movement is gonna scatter like this. It's gonna scatter. This is what an elder shared with me back in uh, October. And it was a really short conversation, but he said that, that it's gonna scatter and all the little people are gonna be talking in every circle. And we got to hold it together because we don't. We want to hold it together, and that it's like that that um, bundle of arrows. As we start to fragment, it's going to be easier to break those arrows. And so we can't. We need to hold them all together because they can't break that bundle. And right now is the most important time to do that. We may not agree with everybody on what they're doing, but we're all a piece of that puzzle. And I think that's what I'm getting in these teachings is that we're all a piece of that puzzle and these youth are all a piece of that puzzle we're a piece of that puzzle and to encourage all the chaperones there to give the youth the tools that they need to complete and share the story language preservation and the healing that they have to bring with them when they give it to the youth so they don't pass on any of those uh, teachings that that might not benefit them down the road the court case is so important as I'm looking at all this footage, I watch it frame for frame. Um, been watching it for hours so far and I'm hearing, uh, tune, tuning it up real loud and I'm hearing what the officers are saying and I can't help many times to get upset when I'm seeing them officers smiling and I wanted to highlight those and, and what departments they came from. Um, when I first documented the security up on the hill where I got the charges of stalking, that was the first um, security firm we, I think we believe now that when I go to court is Morton County will validate that they were working with a security firm because I'm starting to show a progression of when they were working with these securities and then later on when they were being trained by Tiger Swan in the background. There's a certain officers in there that I highlight and this is what we've seen at Standing Rock and the violations that were happening to water protectors that were praying, that were praying peacefully down there and that the agitators were in there. And I'm watching to see who the agitators were and where did that start and why were they allowed to come into certain camps? And I don't think that a lot of our people knew that these people had this intention there because they didn't come with those intentions themselves. And so the rumors that start started from these infiltrators and just watching this video um, I was going through another one where I've actually followed Tiger Swan lightning lighting the top of the hill on fire with the drone 
and as they uh, they didn't shoot at it that I that I knew, uh, but it was dark, and I kept seeing the light aimed at it, and you know the drone. I followed him for about a good 15 minutes, the vehicle until until uh, they got away. So this is continued footage, continued monitored footage to look and look at your own footage that you have on your phone. Continue to send it to me and let's, let's uh, cross-examine each other's footage and share what, what it is you have. Um, I saw other footage that I documented with the, uh, the burning um, dozers in the back um, documenting their drones. Uh, we've got one that actually looked like it you know, it uh, it shot from above, and I'm not sure if that was a uh, if that was accurate. But I want to be sure before I post anything like that. So it's just watching it frame for frame for frame, and listen to the footage too. Need your help to listen to what they're saying. One of them, there, there's footage with one of the guys saying, um, "The pressure is on. The pressure is on," and that was at the North Camp, and that's when they pulled the medic right out of the vehicle as the vehicle was driving. The thing that you guys may not know is there's called there's something called the the uh, battle rhythm. Google that the battle rhythm, and it means that if they control the 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 battle rhythm of this movement, which starts with yellow journalism, it starts with internal fighting, getting us to fight against each other. The more we fight against each other, the better their scenario, the better their narrative. Um, the way they set things up between leadership, the thing, the way they try to pinpoint leadership, uh, their negotiations, all those things are controlled with the battle rhythm, the, the saying it's going to flood and then um, making that apparent on the tribal side. The tribe, whether they, they know it or not, were part of that battle rhythm. And when you see those resolutions come out and you see uh, the, the pull away from the tribe, that's part of the battle rhythm not saying they're a part of it. What I'm saying is this is the control of Tiger Swan and the state of North Dakota and the governor from what I know so far is that this is how they controlled the battle rhythm. And with, with laying out these facts, with laying out um, the different scenarios that happens in the media and creating their own narrative, but also in yellow journalism. And we have one more radio station in Bismarck that doesn't seem to be on the same page as all the water protectors. And it reminds me of uh, Netizens. You know, if you guys remember that, that's the one that um, Tiger Swan was documenting. And this is the reason why I don't give it energy and I don't, I don't validate it and I don't watch it because it's like yellow journalism. And be, stay away from the yellow journalism. You can Google what yellow journalism is. It's, it's, it's the, the moderator creating this... Um, this narration that doesn't fit what's happening. So these are the things that are like in the battle rhythm of what's happening here. And we need to change that narrative. And it's important that your video comes in. So I'm looking at all the footage too, and I see a lot of people have phones. So you guys um, uh, send in your footage, upload it to Vimeo, send me the link into digital smoke signals, uh, create a password on it because the FBI through, through, um, through a court order can get your, your FBI records or your, your, your Facebook. Okay, so be very careful what you post on there if that's a, how you want to do it. Uh, Proton Mail is a great one to send through because the mail disappears or the link disappears after the mail. You can send it to disappear after you get it. Another one to communicate on is through, um, through uh, not social media. Social media is recorded. So... Um, WhatsApp app is not a good one either because they can retrieve messages on WhatsApp app. So these are just a few tips and tricks of protecting yourself as an indigenous citizen to your nation, as dual citizenship to the United States nation. So you're a dual citizen, protect yourself in both ways. And one of the things that I think we protected ourselves was spiritually was through the drums that were playing all the time. They documented that they could not hear what was happening in camp because the prayer was so strong and those drums were going all the time. And that is uh, very powerful to know that our medicine was, was that powerful there, that strong, and that they couldn't, they couldn't infiltrate that no matter what they did. Even when they were there at camp, they couldn't infiltrate it. But we used those songs. We used our language, those of us that had it, and we shared messages with that. 
and that's what's very powerful. So relatives, this is still going strong. This is still very powerful in its movement and it's still happening today. So show your support, continue to share with each other the messages so you can get them accurate. Any water protectors out there that aren't being legally represented by your public pretender, get a hold of Water Protective Legal or you know, get a hold of me, uh, do what I can to share any, any uh, support in your way. And your discoveries, it's your right to get your discovery. Your attorney cannot hold it against you. He cannot hold it from you. So these are the things that I'm learning and we're just sharing legal support, crowdsourcing solutions together. And if you're holding back that, that uh, all of the solutions or media, are like, it's not gonna help anybody. Now is the time, now is the time to share that. And also put it legally where it can't be shared only with the legal, with the lawyers. So if you're doing a documentary or anything like that, it's not gonna be shared anywhere else. It's just gonna be shared between legal support so they can look at it. So your, your media is protected, both native and non-native. Those are the solutions we're looking at, guys. If you recorded audio, make sure that that's all also protected that way. Sending blessings your way. Thank you guys for showing your support. I got court in a few more days. And um, I believe it's going to be a good, it's going to go well. And it's going to be historical content on why I was documenting there as uh, not just a native journalist, but also as a cultural monitor, which with that drone documenting all the sacred sites, before they were desecrated, which they were desecrated. So sending blessings your way, relatives, to all our relations. Bijan Anishdahai, Nama Nama Nanishdahai, Nama Shunami, Bunii, Yarua, Mogui, Bijau Humira, to all our relations in the four directions. Oh, time to go work with these youth now. The social movement that happened, not just in the beginning, but the social movement in uh, the September, October, and then so on. It was a youth that we didn't have to retrain to do the social media for, for getting out the water protector's message and getting out all of the human right violations, the constitutional violations, but also a moment to educate and empower the youth to be able to look into themselves and their own culture and, and back home on what was going on. Beautiful opportunity to educate the FBI that are listening in right now Tiger Swan listening in right now, the BIA that I know is listening in, and all the different agencies that were there from Homeland Security who are listening in to um, uh, park ranger feds. You had uh, uh, so many different federal agencies that were there and security agencies that were there, uh, security firms from around Bismarck. So this is one of the most unique times I think we have is to be able to share that this is real area right here for you, all you concrete Indians that's been here. It's been a journey here running into students who are running into the youth who recognize the work that's been done from all of our water protectors at Standing Rock, running into the uh, chaperones and stopping and visiting and sharing with them they want to know so much about what's going on, um, what's still going on. And many of you guys know that you, the youth are part of. Money relatives, those of you guys just joining in. I'm currently at the Unity Conference over here in Denver, Colorado, speaking tomorrow and sharing the stories on indigenous independent media, community journalism, and what it means to be a digital storyteller in Indian country and outside of Indian country. This is kind of the, the urban area.